It is September the 14th, 2024. I'm Chris and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Here we go again. Hey, all the three of us. What are you guys oh. doing? Right, that's right. The band is back together. Yeah, and good to see you both. And I'm coming to you this week in super fast, fiber enabled, high definition. No, so, oh, did they upgrade okay. you? Yeah. Right. There, I ha I now have fiber into my house. So, As, yeah, we've we've had this for for a couple of years now. It's glorious, right? It is, yeah, yeah. Four hundred meg up, four hundred meg down. So it's um, nice. Yeah, not, no bad. Something. Yeah, you 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 look better. You look I I was about to say Thank you look you. sharper. You look more <laughs> high definition, more less Snappy. less grainy. Natty. And you sound so much better. That's cool. Well, there we go then. Awesome. <laughs> okay, um today we want to talk about uh, a new gadget that will inevitably make all our photography so much better right it's a new gadget <laughs> nobody's yeah. ever seen these before personally i'm going to take much more imaginative photographs <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly now of course of course everyone has re read the title of this episode we're talking about the new iphones um by apple um and the interesting the interesting uh, situation that we're in is We've seen the keynote, we've seen the announcements, we've seen the specs. Maybe some of us have uh, already ordered one, but we <laughs> haven't had them yet because they are only Unavailable going yet. to be delivered soon. So, um, quick, quick round. And first of all, of course, we're Apple uh, users, so this is about the iPhone. This uh, uh, other other companies make good phones too. So, uh, with that out of the way, have you guys ordered one? No, I haven't. I haven't yet. Really? I, have, I, I ordered it. Yeah. I mean, I, I generally wait uh, to upgrade. So I had a 14. Um, but I, the temptation for the spatial was just too great. Well, you are also an Apple Vision Pro owner. So you have a device to, to look enjoy, at uh, spatial yes. photography and spatial videography. I mean, I have been uh, uh, using the um, Vision Pro uh, and some of their apps to convert some of my still pictures into spatial video. And it works miraculously. Uh, I mean, I'm very, very impressed. But a purpose-built uh, purpose mm. uh, device to integrate with that would be really, really fun for right. me. And there's just... there's. It just seems there's too many things that I use a lot on my phone in terms of photography that uh, it didn't feel like, oh, I don't really need one, but maybe I should. That was like the 15. It just didn't, you know, there wasn't yeah. any real significant difference. This one feels that it can be different. So, so yeah, for, for me, um, I, I've heard voices saying they were kind of bored by the announcements and there was nothing, nothing groundbreaking in there, just in like, a, like an iteration on what's there before. And while that might be true in some cases, um, I've skipped even one more generation, so I'm still on a 13. So um, that's clearly, it's time. It's time. It's Definitely. time for you. See, I'm I'm humming and hawing about this, Chris, because I have a 13 mini. And oh, I love the small the, one. Okay, yeah, I'm I have a 13 love, Pro. So, so the but yeah. for for you, yeah, the yeah. step See, would be even bigger. I've always had small phones, right? So, ah. in in my last run of phones, I had a a four or a four S. I had a six S, and I kept the six S until the twelve came out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that was in the lockdowns and I got the 12 Pro Max and it was great under lockdown when I, you know, and then as soon as I had to try and put it in my pocket and take it out of the house, I was like, nah. So I only kept that for a year. Uh, it's the shortest I ever had a phone. And so I'm, re I'm really tempted by the, the stuff in the 16, especially as a jump from the 13. But I'm really wary of having a big phone again because I just love my little phone so much. <laughs> oh, you'll get used to it. I I have an old SE, like the first generation SE that I sometimes use for like really not so important stuff. 
And that is so tiny. That's even smaller than the the 13 mini. Yeah, so. I, I I ordered the Pro Max big. I I like I like the big screen. I like I have thumb issues <laughs> with uh, and typing, I've, and I I just like the 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 screen of it. You know, uh, and and you're you're a video guy. You you yeah. vi- much more visual than, than a lot of other people. So bigger screen for you, I think, is. Probably I mean, what's good. interesting is, and we can talk about this subsequently, but uh, Momentum issued a huge kind of upgrade to their system, mm-hmm. Momentum making lenses and, and cages and things like that for the phone for cinema. And um, there's a lot of cinematic uh, improvements in this phone that shows it to be very capable of shooting, at least for the small screen, <clears throat> very, very dynamically, um, just in terms of right. log um, or raw, <clears throat> if we're talking stills, and and uh, just the ability to kind of really um, shoot high speed at uh, 4K, which yeah, is let's, nice. Yeah, let's, let's do a quick sweep about some of the features that are, are coming with the new 16 iPhones. Um and of course, like, like faster processor on the 16 Pro and a faster sensor, which can read out pixels twice as fast. So you get like a 4K video at 120 frames per second. Um, uh, the ultra wide camera on the Pro gets 48 megapixels, um, which allows you to get more detail. What else do we have? Um, What's the front facing? Um, I don't think they changed it, <laughs> to be honest. Um, the five 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 X telephoto camera is now in both the Pro models, the Pro and the Pro Max, um, which is this like folded prism folded design. Interesting, technically um, speaking, but yeah, more telephoto. If you haven't had the five Pro Max before, because that had it already. Um, um, video, better slow motion, you can shoot ProRes and, and log, and you can save directly to an external SSD or video, so you don't have to buy the whatever four terabyte phone to shoot video. You can outsource that to an external storage. Um, but the, I oh, think... Speaking I, of which, yeah, sidebar, <clears throat> I printed something on my Bamboo 3D printer, which was, and we discussed this a bit, uh, that uh, enabled me to um, suction cup a small SanDisk um, hard mm-hmm. drive, a four terabyte, right to the back of the iPhone. Cool. So um, a little holder. Could, yeah, a little holder. Um, I no more sticky who, tape. That's good. <laughs> no, <laughs> double sided it, it, sticky tape. It's really built for uh, for the computer. You know, yeah. for 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 a. You know, just to walk around with your computer and have an external hard drive. But this, given the amount of data that uh, an iPhone, the new iPhone, um, c- can kind of pull in, I think it could be very handy if you're sh- going out with the intention of shooting a lot of video. Um, having an outboard uh, hard drive in the multiple terabyte uh, world that just sticks to the back of your phone is going to be very helpful so and uh, usb to usb unless unless it prevents your phone from getting rid of its higher temperature during video shooting <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that so you need you need an external enclosure that also has a fan of some sorts in it um, anyway continuing a- anyway the internals as usual stuff is better in some ways and um it's hardware's improved but the one thing that i think is for me at least is one of the the, the, the key features is a new piece of hardware that they're putting on all the iPhone 16, and that's a new camera, camera button. Mm, yeah. it, mm-hmm. who, who finds that exciting? Me. I definitely find that exciting. Why is that? I do. Why is that? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I think the ergonomics of a camera phone um, leave a lot to be desired. And, and this comes from someone maybe because of just my habits of being able to pull up something and take a picture. I really don't like managing screens. 
at all. Uh, I find I'm not always on the right button if I'm holding my my phone. I like to have an instant, um, just pick up and grab and shoot that that instant feel to it. And also that little um, new button is programmable and uh, gives you a lot of option in terms of the emulation of f-stop um, and other editing so more, more um, direct tools. access to to some of the functions quickly yeah I, and, I, and i think that's it for me so what we're looking at is a is a button that is um recessed as in like sl uh, um, 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 smooth oh. with the surface of the phone as opposed to raised um different haptic experience i think mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of an easy easy to find button like it's the camera button and it is it works if you if you shoot vertical with your right hand you have your thumb over that button and if you shoot uh horizontal then you have your index finger over the button um that's the one thing and it, apparently it allows you to just press it and the camera comes up and then you press it again it takes a photo or you hold it and it takes video so it it, it should really speed up the time to photo in on your phone especially when it's locked i think that'll but just bring out the camera i guess that's uh it's going to be very it convenient it sounds it sounds really exciting right yeah so you know I mean, you've, you've both said it, the, the, the ergonomics are a challenge on any phone, right? So to have a, yeah, just even to, if it, a, a dedicated shutter button, which the iPhone 15s had because you could use that. I think they, they, they have the, the silent switch, which Chris, you and I have still got uh, to uh, an action button, which you could set to be the shutter button. So that was great. This one that gives you more control is potentially brilliant. I, I'm, I'm withholding an opinion until i have actually used had a chance because <laughs> well yeah to, 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 till i have a chance to to try it um rarely yeah, same, do same here same rarely, here rarely do, speaking not speaking me i give it a four star I mean, review i mean what I, <laughs> anything that we're saying now we should be taken with a grain of with salt a, grain of, so, a, so, a whole I, pile I, of salt yeah because, the thing uh, is we're all tesla all drivers right so we all know what it's like <laughs> just to have a pane of glass to control hardware right yeah, um, uh, i actually it, like that to be honest <laughs> I, i've gotten used to it over the last i don't know three years or however nearly long i've had so, my car uh, but 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 it's still not that yeah it in camera terms, I, I, I'll, I'll withhold my opinion until I get a chance to try it. But I am very excited about it. The, the, the chance to be able to control different things you know, with, a, with a, a hardware button without having to move your hand you know, so, and things like that is, is, could, could, be, could be really good. It, so the thing um, that Jeremiah brought up, uh, this, this, uh, it, it, it's not just a, a button, it's a, it's, just, it's a slider. It's a little touchpad, pretty much. So um, you can apparently slide your finger ref left and right to zoom or uh, half press that's by the way a future feature they announced that but they won't deliver it right away but a half press will allow you to switch to a different function like depth of field for portrait mode or whatever different image styles and things um and do you remember the first time canon put a little sliding control on the back of their cameras i had never had one of those but i've read a lot about people being very frustrated with it not it was, working it was so. one of the early of the new generation of cameras wasn't it it was the, yes. the when they first went mirrorless with the yes. what, whatever the mount is called the rf mount yes yeah so I remember it was slated by the pundits mostly. So I, I hope, and and I, I kind of have trust in Apple because touchpads are their thing. So they hopefully will make that easy to use and, and responsive and everything. Um, but that is an interesting thing, like a, an, an exposure button that will also let you slide left and right to change a function, I mean, hopefully I not accidentally, see, right? Well, so. I was just going to go there. I, I, I think there is a built-in danger now. That's what... Just like butt dialing, where no, wait, we wait, reach wait. for a camera. That's where AI comes in, because what you've had on the, the touchpads, I'm looking at my, at my MacBook in front of me, um, is a lot of smarts to, for example, do what's called palm rejection, where you, you with other computers, I've al always had the accidental key presses or touchpad presses by my by my palm resting near it or, or half on it, um, which is 
which are they're, they're, they're quite good at uh, rejecting that. Um, so I assume that the, the phone's new button will do something similar. And by the way, all, all iPhone 16s get that button, not just the bigger ones. Um, so uh, that's kind of cool, I think. So uh, it, I think it, I think it is kind of cool. I think it's yeah. I, I hope the uh, this is a classic Apple first generation hardware innovation, isn't it? So you know, I'm I'm hoping it it, it comes off. Um, it's, is it? Uh, but is it's, it's it though? It's a touchpad. I mean, it's just the the technology they already have in the yeah in the yeah. Fair enough. Fair right? enough. Maybe any niggles are not would, would be in the way that the software has been implemented, and actually they'll they'll fix the hardware over time or something. Yeah, uh, sorry, fix it. Any niggles through software over time? Let's yeah, see. interesting. Let's though. See. very interesting. Um, can we? Um, I have high hopes. You have high. Oh yeah, we all have high hopes. Can can I? Um, can we talk about audio for a minute? Of course. Right, because. I'm really excited about the audio. So uh, I'm, I'm shooting a, a, a small snippets of video quite a lot at the moment. So uh, the fact that you, know, you, you can have an external SSD is fantastic. But just for your sort of, you know, general sort of moving around, sort of just capturing stuff and, and playing with it a little bit, small snippets of video, even if they're really high res, even if they are... Uh, in um you know high frame rates and stuff like that hopefully the, the the files won't be too big the audio thing is potentially really powerful because it's been it's always been so hard to get good audio out of a phone just without without any plugged in microphones or anything like that for, for when you record video the fact that they've now got a chance to uh, according to the specs, um, do wind removal using uh, on video of AI, taking out the echoes out of, uh, of things with the, you know, like room uh, reverb. Room. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then we've had this on our Macs for a while now. Right? I am using it right now. The voice isolation core audio plugin I use all the time, every day. And it means that I don't... Which is I the mean, reason we're not really... We haven't he really heard your kids shout <laughs> outside your door uh, for months now, right? Yeah, exactly. And and it's yeah. just me and the dog here at the moment. So she, you might hear her if she decides not to make that, a, a no. fuss. Not even that, no. But the... Uh, but, you know, and, and just a, a not to do with photography at all, but just in my professional life where I have a, a MacBook Pro and I, I can do all my video calls without even a plug-in microphone. Right, yeah. just using, and that's a three-year-old MacBook Pro. Right, just using that to have that in a phone and to have that on the video that you capture on your phone is going to be awesome. And and the ability to edit it in post is just going to be amazing. I think because I think you could you could go away and do a, a travel vlog, right, a travel video of a of a vacation or whatever it is, without even needing an external microphone. That could be really great. Yeah, so so hardware wise, they have like four microphones in there, and uh, that combines nicely with the video shooting. If you shoot spatial video, that will give you spatial audio. Now, the the whole AI thing with wind removal, um, I, I, I want to hear it first because I think there was one example in the keynote, and I heard some wind, so no, it's not so perfect it, for sure. It, it won't be perfect, but do you know what? Um, uh, if either of you may phone calls on your apple watches right so jeremiah you've got the ultra the same as i have haven't you chris i don't know which watch you've got but um i regularly go out without my phone now and i do uh take calls all the time just on my watch uh, and and it works perfectly and people can hear me really clearly so yeah they, 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 they same. Do a good job same yeah. Um, the, the other thing for the video shooting, which I find, <coughs> find interesting, is they have this, um, well, the, the thing, we, we've had this a while online in some online things and in some plugins that you could, like, do a virtual multi-track out of a single recording. Like, you, you've probably seen the, the voice of a, of a song isolated and, um, like, instruments isolated from a, from a song, from a mix. Um, they are doing this with, or they are claiming to do this with a video now where you have like different audio mixes that you can do, um, like the sound focusing on people in the frame 
and what's outside of the yeah. frame you, 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 is, is softer or they call the next thing they call studio mix which eliminates the ambience totally and the room reverb and just has the voices in it or a cinema mix which places the voices in the center and puts the ambience in the surround channel so they, they, are, they are doing a whole lot of smarts in in that regard and 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 in apple fashion they don't brag that it's ai they just give you the features and under the hood it's it's using machine learning whatever you want to call it so um yeah so i have ordered mine i'm i'll have it in a oh, let's say in a week from now so um yeah maybe maybe let's hope <laughs> and Me too. Let's see. I, th I think once we have it, we'll we might we might have to 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 do uh, a proper review. do another one of these. Yeah, but um, for now, I'm, I'm excited, especially again as I as I skipped two entire generations. Mm. You'll see a big big change. So yeah. I mean, I I expect most of the changes are going to be in photography and videography, but I'm not <laughs> expecting anything well, else. But never know. Well, of course, the question, what does that mean for the future of photography? Um, uh, I made a little list here for myself. It says what it improves is it's faster, it's quicker time to photo, there's probably less fuss about the tech. Um, I, will, I will get a bit more telephoto and uh, less, probably less time in post-production because you have image styles and things that you can customize now. And uh, uh, the one feature that I'm actually looking forward to that they also announced is um, the the focus and recompose, which you know, with a with a bigger camera, with a DSLR or something, you would very often use a central focus point and then half press the shutter to lock the focus and recompose without changing the focus. They are implementing this in a phone now, um, or will as soon as that half press button is done. Which, which is really weird if you think about it, because that was always a workaround, right? <laughs> so, but, it's, but it's one that, that, that gives you a lot of control over where that focus is and um, in a quick and, and fast way. So for me, that is like, mm, that's another attack on the, on the bigger cameras. It could work really well, especially if you, if you have the ability to choose whether or not it locks the ex exposure like you do on a dedicated camera. Because sometimes you want focus lock and exposure lock and then recompose. And other times you want to focus on something, uh, you know, and then you want the camera to, to reassess the exposure when you've moved it. So if oh, you have so that level yeah. of granular control, it could be really cool. In cinema mode, you know, they, of course, they're advertising that, uh, you know, the, the kind of back and forth you're shooting over the shoulder to someone, it's going to rack focus to that person. But it may also give you the opportunity not to do that. So sometimes you'll keep the person in the foreground very yeah. sharp. So the, the ability to override it is, I think, significant if you're doing that kind of filmmaking. But I think it will um, offer a lot of opportunities to do very professional-looking cinematic um, film on your iPhone and cut it. And implement all kinds of uh, color correction and uh, mixing. So. But, but what it won't improve in terms of your future of photography is, of course, your sense of like spacing, placement, alignment. How about storytelling? Composition, <laughs> your sense of story, your your timing. Um, yeah, all of that won't be better. So, uh, I I think we can all agree that there are technical improvements. They might lead to, or they will lead to some creature comforts but i don't think i, think it's, I, I don't I, think i'll I, be a better photographer i'm going to challenge you chris on that one about spacing and placement right i reckon it's not long before your phone says to you you want to move to the left because the tree is coming out of that fella's head <laughs> right uh, yeah I, you know I, you know I, we you, had something like that in a, in a very simple form there were some kodak point and shoots um years ago that would allow you to overlay on the on the LCD screen uh, a, a composition guide for different kind of scenarios. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. would have you would have a sunset overlay which gave you mm -hmm. a line for the horizon and a little circle for the sun. Um, you'd have a group shot um, overlay with like two, three, four people outlines, and you 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 
you'd, you'd uh, make people step into these borders and uh, then then you'd have a perfect group shot. Um, they had like 20, 30 different templates there. So someone has tried it and they have not done it again for <laughs> good reason because people hated it. So Fair enough. So I well, so what does it mean for the future of my photography? Um, I I I'm going to do more ultra wide shooting. I think if I yeah when I get one of these yeah because at the moment the phone that oh you I don't have, have the ultra wide yeah. oh that's so much well fun. I do have the ultra wide um but it's the telephoto I don't have uh, oh. but the the ultra wide is is a pretty rubbishy sensor compared to the main camera on, on my phone so to that have an ultra than, wide yes. that is a good a similar quality to the main camera uh and 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 can do things I, I i like to shoot you know in the evenings and, and night stuff and my my phone the ultra wide doesn't do night mode so or it, if it does it's really really grotty so not gritty grotty <laughs> so yeah it's uh so so that that that's something i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to my shoddy videos being perceived better because they've got cleaned up audio on them i'm definitely <laughs> looking forward to that uh and uh yeah and having a dedicated shutter button and i hope the other stuff works so i yeah i think it's cool i think it genuinely it would probably it would help me to leave a point and shoot camera at home more often and I think. and your question about uh about if it's possible to make a case for that new button um yeah the case makers are already on it so you'll find cases with a bigger cutout that is more like more angled towards that button so yeah it's gonna be, we, we, we get more and more buttons it's going to be more more hole than case isn't it in the end it's, but at the same time it, at, yeah. at the same time they promise you that it's now twice as robust for for drops and things so maybe it's time to go caseless i don't know <laughs> we'll see uh, we'll see about that but but uh, I, it's an I expensive toy right it is <laughs> the, the, what's interesting is the i because i did order the uh, silicon case that comes with it, and evidently the cover of the button is sealed, but it it can it does uh, allow the haptic feel and the sensible. So there must be some wires in there that are um, <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've always liked the Apple silicon cases. Actually, they're, they're so do yeah, I. They're, yeah. they're one of my favorites. They feel good. All right, Jeremiah. What does that mean for your future of photography? It's more the future of videography for you, right? Well, no, no, actually, because um, I use it more for. I mean, will you, know, you so will you leave your Leica at home more often now? Um, that's a very good question. Um, probably I will, but I I use my Leica for very different reasons. Like when I want real sharpness when i'm going out with a specific kind of intention in mind i li like to bring the leica mainly because i like the analog feel of it i mean that that is for me the pure joy of working with it and know it like i know it really well so i don't think about it and i i do really like the fact that it's it's fast superb quality and i can get to where I need to go quickly. Um, the iPhone is, you know, holds promise for a different reason. I, I, this is how I would describe it. I use the Leica for very traditional photography. Aesthetically, whatever that is, a landscape or street photography or, you know, shooting... Um, very high quality um, imagery that is, I, I, I just have to describe it as purist. Mm -hmm. With the phone, I'm much more um, interested in the AI capabilities, in combining it with AI, in using it for experimentation, um, and all that comes with that. That's a whole, that, that would be a whole show. But with that, I can bring that anywhere and, and make art, if you will, um, and have that art. I could probably now get close to finishing it on the actual phone with the quality that they promise. And so it, they're two different tools and two different mindsets. So 
the, there's no easy answer. Will I leave it at home? I will use these tools for very different reasons. And and you will probably only find out once you have the new yeah. phone, right? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, fingers crossed that all our wishes come true, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, Indeed. you get a great trade-in. <laughs> yeah, I'm trading my, my, my old 13 into, um, I don't know how much. It's, it's probably less than it could get somewhere else. So, yeah. Anyway, it's convenient. All right. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. They give you a very good trade in here. And I calculated the use of the phone over the, say, what is it, two years, three years that I've had that generation broken down by month by hard costs is quite inexpensive. Hmm. So, interesting. Anyway, but by the way, for those who. Who don't want to upgrade? Um, the thing I did last with my 13 Pro was when the battery started getting a bit weaker. Um, I just had the battery replaced. That's uh, quite affordable. I think it was a hundred bucks, and yeah. um, that gave it a pretty new life. So um, I'm getting close to that on mine now, actually, as well. Yeah, after three years, it's get yeah the battery only does about 88 percent or something like that. So I'm if like, you have I'm an appointment, they can years. usually do it while you're waiting for it. Yeah. So mm. yeah. Cool. Anyway. That's it so far about our new new gadgets coming up. Um, let's look at our picks of the week. I brought you a camera. How about that? It's not a camera. It's a camera app. We are and a photography podcast. So I think it's it a photography fits. podcast. <laughs> this is this is an interesting one because it's a it's a little app called XP4N, mm. which emulates the name XPan, which is a is a Hasselblad camera that. Um, is now I think uh, as expensive as gold dust. It's a film camera from the nineties. It's worth and about as much as dust. Yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, and a, a guy from the Netherlands has written an app for for iOS. Um, it's called XP4N, and uh, it emulates that camera. It doesn't. It doesn't do like super high resolution. It uses pretty much um, a crop to emulate what the X-Pen does. It has a three or four film emulations in there. Um, it's a very single task type of um, camera app. Not much to set other than the, the film emulation and then pressing the button. Um, have you used it? I have used it. Um, I think it's like a dollar, 99 cents, something like that. And it... Interestingly enough, is um, I could do a crop, of course. I could do that same crop. Um, mm -hmm. I could throw a, a, a film emulation on my photos, no problem. But having all this in one box and kind of forcing you into this aspect ratio, which is very wide. It's it's like wow. two. It's it's like two thirty-five millimeter frames next to each other. It's a really wide format. Yeah. Um, uh, shooting in that changes your mindset. It it it. Gives you it gives you a frame of reference to work in, and you have no other frame at that point. That's how you shoot, so that's how you compose, and it forces you into a different kind of uh, working style. Can, can I just can I just comment emotionally about sure. this X Pen? I, I have mentioned this before. Um, I had an X Pen. Mm -hmm. I loved my X Pen. Uh, two incredible lenses, uh, and you know the ninety being amazing as a normal lens, 45 wide. I brought it all over the world. Um, the uh, chip started to deteriorate. It had a lot of a lot of issues inside. Um, I brought it here locally to get repaired. They said, no, we have to send it to Hasselblad. They sent it to Hasselblad. Hasselblad sent it out saying, uh, we can repair it. We, we no longer Ouch. repair this camera. Um, uh, it, it has materials that we can't... Um, we can't, uh, you know, get or whatever it is. And they just blew me off. This is a very expensive camera by camera me. Any third party uh, repairs possible? No, I looked everywhere. Okay. And, uh, and it's a boat anchor sitting on right above my head right now. And <laughs> I think there may be, there may be one person in your area that does that. So if you ever listen to the podcast, I dream of cameras, which is uh, no made by Jeff Greenstein and Gabe Sachs, who were, who both live in your neck of the woods, Jeremiah. Uh, Jeff has two X pans and he bought mm -hmm. the second one because the first one was a bit flaky, granted. 
but I think he may have a contact that can do some bits of mending an eggs pan. But it for, was it, but it was never even made by Hasselblad anyway. Was it was it? made in made Japan. By, made, by, by made in Japan by Fuji. So yeah, it's, and, and they it's just blew one. it off to Fuji anyway. I'm just grumbling here because yeah. um, I, I, I would too. I, I would too. I, I just feel that that I mean, with Leica, when they had issues, you just brought it in. They fixed it. Even if you waited years, they would they wouldn't make any profit on the. They stood behind their work, and Hasselblad, which I've always been a big fan of until then, um, just so sort of very unhappy about Hasselblad. I'm totally going to get this app, though, because I love working in a, a very wide aspect ratio, <laughs> and you can't, get that, you can't get that in most apps. You cannot dial it in so that you're composing yes. natively in that aspect ratio. So it's totally the aspect ratio in, in combination with uh, the film emulations, which are quite nice. There's some mm -hmm. bloom built in for higher for highlights oh. and things, which is, is kind of nice. Yeah, I'm I, totally buying and it. If you, I, 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 the only reason I'm not tapping away, the only reason I'm still talking to you right now is that I actually use my phone to make this podcast, so I can't, <laughs> I can't do it and until you, I... And if you install it, go into the iPhone settings app, and there are additional options to choose from. Oh, so. nice. Definitely. Right, that's what I'm doing straight after the show. All right. So you mean, the, uh, Chris, the settings in the app or the in settings? the app there are settings that you can set but then in the iphone apps uh, in the iphone's settings uh you scroll down to the to the app and you have three or four oh, okay, additional options ah, okay kind of cool. a secret secret options thing yeah. okay. anyway adrian you brought us what what is that it's moving all over the place Ah well, so this is oh, so yeah. I have two. I, I've indulged in two picks this week because this one is photographic uh, and, and is real. The next one is related to the I, the new iPhones and is not quite real yet. So this is uh, just a great example of uh, using drones to light, oh, to light landscape things. photography. Yeah. I see. Uh, and uh, yeah, so so the photographer uh, is uh, Liam Mann. Um, who, who I, I don't know anything other about other than you know, recently having found this collection of photos uh, and just some of these drone shots, you know, uh, clearly, as you expect, if you're using a drone to light something, most of them are taken at night. Um, uh, but he's lighting up sort of the inside of glaciers, you know, island stacks, uh, some classic landscapes like uh, yeah. the, uh, you know, the Isle cool. of Sky in Scotland. They're, they're, they're stunning, yeah. and, and he's, he's uh, there is a group of them doing it. There's some Ruben, yeah. oh God, I'm blanking on his name, but there are a few uh, that are doing absolutely astonishing work with uh, drones, drone lighting over powerful landscapes. And yeah, it, fantastic. It's, it's amazing because it's the only way to get those images, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. All right. And the other one, Adrian, you brought us is uh, Quip Design. So, so the other the other one I bought. Yeah, do you know what? When you guys were talking earlier on about you know the video and needing to get rid of the heat and the external storage and things like and that, I, I was just having things. a quiet little chuckle to myself because <laughs> the Quip the Quip Design Cinema Grip is designed for iPhones, um, and it's designed so. Yeah, yes, it, it's it's very much like any other grip you know it has a it has a, a fatter grippy bit um, uh, and you slide your phone into it but where you the bit that you is, is grippy you can actually slide an ssd into that so that you've got a totally uh you know, a, a miniature ssd you know a terabyte a couple of terabytes but you know you, there's actually a, a fixed place in this grip for it it then can allow you to add on bits. I believe there's an add on which is an external fan to deal with removal of the heat from the phone. Wow. Um, you can have, you know, it's got um, fixtures for, for filters over the lenses, of course. You can even add rails to it. Quite why you'd want to add rails to it, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but it's got, yeah, lots of quarter 20, so you can put rails for, on it. Rails for, uh, like you know, certain kinds of filters, filter packs would slide in. Um, ah, okay, right. So, so I, um, it the reason I say it's not quite real yet is that it's only available for pre-order. It's been through some sort of 
uh, crowdfunding, I believe, successfully been through crowdfunding. And I thought it was Kickstarter, but I had a look on it on Kickstarter for it earlier today and couldn't find it. So I, I Indiegogo. I don't quite... They have a link to Indiegogo on here. I think. Oh, did they? Okay, right. Thank you, Chris. Active calling. It. All right. Wow. So yeah. Fancy, fancy. This looks very, very good. <laughs> fancy, it, fancy indeed. Yeah, and they do it for the Pro Max as, and the Pro sizes of iPhones. It'll work with iPhone 15s as well, apparently, because um, uh, I think they're basically the same layout the 16s aren't they uh, there's not a huge oh, well. amount of difference so oh well so more gadgets to get yeah that kind of I think stuff. It, it is the only downside with these ones that are so specifically designed is that every time they change the form sure. factor of the device you have you, all your kit is redundant that's that's I've your got business a whole model bunch you know <laughs> of, i've got a whole bunch of iphone 12 pro max external video hardware <laughs> that i just can't use well i suppose i could use the i could use the filters but if i find something the same size but yeah all right and uh jeremiah you brought us a photographer again i did someone that, you know just a little bit of inspiration how do you pronounce the name jody ake ake I, I guess ake i guess i guess what what's um, what's her thing um, I, I just like the impressionist landscapes. Very is that actual bold tin type, or I is think, that? Yeah, I think she uses all new versions of old technology um, and whatnot. But uh, she, very gifted and uh, very beautiful work. I'm always appreciative of people fusing old and new techniques to kind of evoke um, a certain a nostalgia, but also emotion. So I find these cool. powerful and always looking for great photographers doing um, unusual work that's carefully considered and studied. And she's one. <sighs> very cool. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, yeah. If you, something if you... I think, you know, I think we should discuss in the future is how um, our new views of AI photographs have now invaded our responses to real photographs. Definitely. I was having that exact same response to these. I was like, I was looking at these and going, so is Jeremiah pranking us again? Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, well but, the, the next thing we will also need to talk about, but that's a different episode is um, Jeff Bridges is reviving the wide Lux camera. Is he? Good for him. He is another uh, legendarily difficult to fix camera, <laughs> which which he is uh, is a real fan of, and yeah. uh, I could be very that, tempted. Apparently, with one bringing of those. that back. I just found that out just a couple of days ago. So, digital version. No, it's not. Great. It's mechanical. No, no, but a, a, no, a, a digital version of uh, like a wide chip. And... Let's make let's make a wide lux uh, for the iPhone. How about that? I like um, it. Anyway, just... <laughs> our orders are on their way. We'll we'll report back. Um, this was The Future Photography. Uh, you can find us online at thefuturephotography.com. Join our Discord to talk to us. And um, uh, we'll be back soon. Take care. Bye-bye. See you, folks. <clears throat>